Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the never do through the GUI what you can do through the CLI. Uh, today the video that uh, we are going to, I'm going to present and you are going to watch uh, is Rust fuzzing and specifically with AFL. Uh, we will look into all this uh, jargon in the video. If you are not aware at all of uh, fuzzing, you will see in the video what fuzzing is and what AFL is, etc. But uh, before going into the video, I would like to uh, say a few words, words about testing in general and how the two, um, <clears throat> uh, two, the two opposites that I, uh, that I see in this field of testing because some people really do not appreciate testing and uh, they think that uh, it is not needed etc and uh, the other i wouldn't say extreme the two extremes the one is the ones that do not appreciate testing and the other extreme is but again uh, i do not think that it is an extreme i think it is a very solid position to take so the other part of the equation is people that invest their time and effort and money into developing uh, libraries and developing tools like fuzz testing fuzzing in general in order to test uh, their application even further uh, and not only depend on their unit tests or their integration tests, etc. So the two extremes are people that do not test and do not uh, appreciate testing and people that in, uh, invest money and resources and time into making uh, libraries and tools for even more extended testing like fuzzing. Uh, as I said, uh, I do not think that people that invest money and time in fuzzing and in such testing uh, strategies are an extreme. In my opinion, this should be the norm. Uh, when you create an application, the, there is nothing uh, more logical than trying to, to test every bit of it. I think that it is very professional on behalf of a developer to be able to verify uh, the behavior of his program, the code that he wrote and uh, not leave everything in luck uh, or not being able to to modify his code at will. So as you can understand, I am uh, I belong to the people that uh, really appreciate testing. Uh, sorry for you that do not appreciate testing. But uh, this is where uh, I lie in this issue. And having said uh, all these things uh, as a preface to the video, we will uh, get into the main part now and we will start fuzzing and we will do it through AFL. So first of all, what is fuzzing? If you don't know what is what fuzzing is, it's uh, Testing by providing arbitrary data to your uh, application, ar arbitrary input, and uh, seeing if your application can handle this or if this input will lead to crashes, to hangs, to unexpected uh, breaking of the application. Now, regarding fuzzing in Rust, there is this Rust fuzz book which contains all the information that we are interested in. Uh, everything that uh, we will see in this video is within this book. Uh, it's not too difficult to, to read or to set up, but we will go through the motion and do what is described here. There are two um, basic methods of fuzzing. One is car cargo fuzz and the other is uh, car uh, fuzzing through AFL. For today we will use AFL and I tend to use AFL more than car cargo fuzz because currently cargo fuzz needs a nightly in order to run and uh, you, only, you also need to run it from within the project itself 
Whereas the AFL, uh, I think it's easier to set up. You just require what you want to fuzz and you fuzz it. So you will see about this. So let's start uh, by implementing this uh, fuzzing. So let's come here and see the, the instructions. First of all, we have to install the cargo fuzz. I have done it myself. So let's uh, oh, cargo. F oh, sorry, we are in the wrong place. We want to start fuzzing with AFL. So here we are. Requirements cargo install AFL. I have done that. Let's go here and here. As you can see, the first thing we have to do is create a fuzz target. So we will do that, but we will rename this. We will say that we want to create just uh, let's have this here and let's have this here. And we will say that we want to cargo new uh, bin. Uh, the name is URL fast target, but we will just say uh, fast target because we will not use uh, the URL crate here. We will see what we will use. So let's create this. Uh, we need two dependencies in this crate. So let's go into that CD fast target and we say that we want to open this in C Lion. And what we need is according to this, these dependencies close. So we're coming here, cargo lock. Uh, but we said that we don't want the URL, so we will not use the URL. But I would like to use something else. Uh, Crates.io and something I usually use is Chrono. So let's search for Chrono. Uh, so I will uh, uh, I will use Chrono for this. Let's fuzz Chrono a little bit. Let's say that we want whatever. Okay. Let's go to our instructions. Now we need to write the source. Uh, okay, let's come here. Let's come to our uh, main. And we want to do this. And we don't want, we don't need this. And we can say in this chrono uh, daytime from from I think there's yeah parse from str let's use this let's use this and this accepts uh, I think two two references to a string let's check this uh, parse from str yes it accepts as you can see two string references Okay, that's our setup. And uh, what we do, as you can see, is that we create, we get some data from uh, the AFL crate. We create a string and if this operation is a successful uh, operation, then we pass the screen to the daytime crate and we will see what we will get. So the setup is ready, uh, build, so we have to build. We have to say this. We will come here and we will say build. Okay, it was successfully built and it needs some uh, starting inputs. So we will say, we will copy paste and we will say 
let's say we will name it date first of all and we will say echo this is our first uh, let's say here and let's give it a third date and let's say that it is Monday Costria 23 of 2021 okay this will be our input we created an in directory and we pre provided some uh, test cases so if we check this you will see that we have these three files uh, and then we start fuzzing so what we have to do is copy this copy paste and say fast target because this is the name that we provided so let's reset and let's start and it says uh, uh, you can uh, ah we have uh, I have uh, a system let's say thing we have to edit this we don't want to edit this you can later go back if you don't want to change the setting, set uh, this. Okay, so we need to set this. So we will say that this must equal to 1. And let's fuzz. Okay. We started fuzzing. I am really curious if we will make the program crash uh, yeah but uh, I will leave this running and uh, at the same time I will uh, talk a little bit so let's uh, mini minify this and as you can see this is the whole setup uh, to make AFL run and fuzz our crate the setup is very easy and uh, I think that there is no way why sh um, a developer or, or a library developer somebody who writes a crate or a library in other languages etc etc should not use uh, should not incorporate this kind of testing into his uh, into his uh, develop development workflow I think it is necessary and as I said there are companies that uh, spend money, time and resources in order to uh, develop these fuzzing libraries. And of course, as you would expect, one of them is uh, Google. Uh, Google fuzzing uh, library. There is a Google library. Yeah. Ah, this is it. Ozfuzz. This is the library I'm referring to. Uh, this is a Google product, of course. Uh, and it provides, as you can see, fuzzing for open source software, etc., etc. Uh, plus, there is, if we check the Cargo Fuzz book, If we check the cargo fuzz book, there, there is also a trophy case here, and this uh, includes it uh, links to this repository. And in here, there are issues that were uncovered through the cargo fuzz through fuzzing. Uh, the crate is here, and the problem is here with the related uh, pull requests, etc. And as you can see, all these things were found through fuzzing. This is a very important because, as you know, 
uh, such vulnerabilities uh, create uh, the CVEs, serious CVEs, uh, which include uh, various stuff, uh, uh, privilege escalation, remote code execution, etc., etc. And of course, if you have a way to find these uh, these problems yourself in, instead of others founding this problem and taking advantage of this and uh, creating a mess and creating problems and creating a huge monetary problem to to the industry because uh, these problems come at a monetary cost as you can understand if you leak data and and thousand different problems of course if you can find them your on your own it's quite irresponsible i would say if you do not do this in order to find them so this is the the video uh, as you saw to sum up we had a very easy uh, experience setting up uh, fuzzing we started fuzzing oh <laughs> we got something very very uh, interesting you see unique crashes i didn't expect that we started fuzzing the chrono crate which is a hugely uh, used crate let's see here the downloads downloads 33 million downloads all time and we have four unique crashes through our fuzzing which is very interesting to my mind that means that i have to look into this and create pull requests i suppose i have to i will try to identify the problems myself myself first and create pull requests else i will just report the issues to the maintainers of the chrono crate but as you can see uh, we went for a demonstration and we found some issues that can make chrono crash. As you can see there are six total crashes and the four of them are unique so four different inputs created a crash for the chrono library. Well to sum up this is the video I hope that you enjoyed the video that you learned something useful from this video I hope I motivated you in order to get get more into testing as I am interested in testing and it's not a, an academic interest I as I said I believe it is um, the professional attitude of a developer to verify the code that he writes the behavior of his program through tests uh, so yeah I hope you learned something and that you apply it apply it yourselves in the future this is all that I wanted to share with you uh, have a nice uh, day night etc and see you soon probably I will demonstrate the second way of fuzzing in uh, the next video bye guys <laughs>